Morning, everyone. <laughs> How are we doing this morning? I think I'm not alone in thinking, you know, hearing the news about the Queen in some way making a response. And thinking about, you know, she's always been there, ever present. And I think about service and sacrifice. And that's, of course, epitomized when we consider and break bread later on Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his love. So I want to spend a moment later on, a little later on, just reflecting on what it means, uh, ministry, sacrifice, and service. But let's pray, first of all. Father, we come before you at this time. And as we gather, I just ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. As we as a nation mourn the loss of our monarch, and as we consider what it means to serve and the sacrificial lives and ministries, we just pray your blessing on each and every one of us. And we pray for those that are grieving, close family and the nation and all those around the world that have been impacted by her over 70 years of service. And we just pray your blessing on our nation as we go forward into this new era. May your will continue to be done in all of our lives. And we just pray for our nation as questions will be asked about, you know, a continuing monarchy, all these questions. What is the way forward? You are a God of vision you are a god of revelation and we just pray that you will reveal to us what you would have us do and we just pray that you will bless us bless this time together in jesus name we pray amen i want to read a bit from psalm 145 and it's just thinking about the goodness and greatness of our god as we continue as we consider why we can come to him through his son and why we should. Psalm 145, reading verses 3 to 7, says this. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. And here this morning, we just, we're just going to do that because he is worthy of praise. We're now going to uh, stand and sing together that song based on, it, on Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise.
thanks, you know, for all that he has done for us in the past, is doing for us now, and will do for us in the future. Just praise him with your heart. It may be a verse of scripture, it may be one word, because our God is worthy of our offerings, because great is the Lord indeed, and worthy of praise. Let's pray as you feel led. I want to invite Sharon Akuna to come up. Sharon texted me last night about graduation. I didn't quite fully understand what your request was, but I know you want to share about your graduation. No, just wanted to give you a thanksgiving offering. A thanksgiving. Well, come up and sit with us anyway. I didn't share anything about anything. Oh, you did? But that's good. If you did it last week, that's fine. <laughs> Let me pray for you anyway. We give God thanks. Father, we just give you thanks. And it's good that Sharon has graduated. And we pray your blessing on her for those years of study and diligence that she has spent. And that she has been successful in, the, in, in, the, in graduating, Father. And doing what is required. I just pray that you will bless her. Bless her family. And bless her sister she goes um, back to Kenya. And I just pray, Father, that you will, um, for all those starting university and college 
in the next few weeks or a month, that you will bless them as they prepare to embark on their years of study. I just pray that you will be with them, you will guide, keep, and bless them. And may their studies, their efforts uh, be fruitful. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to give our God thanks and praise. And it's good to, and he's our light in times of darkness when we are going through difficult times. So let's stand and sing and praise him by singing, shine Jesus, shine. And we just think about that light dispelling the darkness of uncertainty, the darkness of doubts. We need to trust in our God and ask him to shine through us and to shine on us. Let's stand and sing. to God for the sacrifice of his only son. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None can come to the Father except through me. So with the service, please come forward and join me at the table of the Lord.
us take a moment of quiet reflection as we contemplate Jesus' sacrifice for us, his love, his willingness to give all he could humanly give because he loved us so much. And understood that no one else but him could make this sacrifice as an atonement for our sins. Just give you a moment to make your own prayer of thanksgiving to God. Be quiet. Thank him that you're able to come to this table and share at no cost to yourselves. He paid the price for us. And all he asks us to do is to come to him through his son. All he asks us to do is to come to him, to him through his son. And he will bless us. We will feel his presence and know of his love. I shared earlier about the, the death of our Queen and considering her life, her ministry, her sacrifice to this nation and to those of others. And we were amazed that we hear stories about you know, where she'd been and what she'd done. And considering her life, one of faithful service, and I was quite moved by something that she'd said when she was first about to be coronated, that whether her life is long or short, it would be in the service of her nation. And I thought, what about us in our service to God? <coughs> How committed are we? How sacrificial are we? How much do we love to serve in the name of the Lord who has given so much and asks so little? Think about that for a moment. Jesus tells us, I am the living bread that has come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. The bread which I shall give is my own flesh, given for the life of the world. We remember it was on the night that Jesus was going to be betrayed. He was gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem with the disciples. They had shared and celebrated. Then Jesus took bread that was left over and broke it like this and said to the disciples, This is my body that will be broken for you. Eat this in memory of me. Let us consider the body broken. Christ gave himself up as a sin offering. He paid the price for our sinfulness with his life. And after Jesus had broken bread, he poured out wine like this and said to the disciples, this is going to be a symbol of the new covenant that I will establish. It will be sealed by my blood. He talks about a new covenant, a new relationship with our Heavenly Father through his blood, through his sacrifice, and through his love. Let us just contemplate the enormity of what he's done. And be thankful in our hearts that whenever we doubt how much anyone cares for us, we just need to look to the cross and remember Christ's sacrifice, that act of 
sacrificial love. All he could give, he gave for us. Shall we pray? Let's give thanks. With all our hearts, we thank you, Lord. With all our hearts, we thank you, Lord. For this bread and the wine, we thank you. For these sacraments, we take. For the forgiveness that you make, we thank you. With all our souls, we thank you, Lord. With all our souls, we thank you, Lord. For the victory that we've won. For this taste of things to come. For the love that makes us one, we thank you, Lord. With all our voice, we thank you, Lord. With all our voice, we thank you, Lord. For the spirit and the flame, for the power of your name, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Amen. 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 If you feel for whatever reason you don't want to partake, then let the bread and the wine pass you by.
who have eaten bread, reminding us of the body of Christ. Now we drink the wine, reminding us of his blood. Let us do so now, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the blood of our Lord and Saviour. Let us drink together now and be thankful. Let us continue to praise our God and give him thanks as we sing as our communion song. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. I think this, this one may be new to us. Let's stand and sing together.
know what, I want to sing that again. Because just seeing the looks on faces, just seeing the response as that's being sung. I can feel the presence of God ministering to his people. Hallelujah. Amen. And if God is at work and his spirit is moving, who am I? Who are you to deny the spirit of the living God? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Give God thanks and praise as his spirit moves amongst his people. Stirring hearts, lifting voices, praises from the Almighty coming down. Let's sing again with thanksgiving and open and penitent hearts before our God. Praise the Lord. Please, hallelujah. Father, may your spirit manifest in this place.
That spirit that, that birthed the church, the spirit that t- sent us out into this broken world, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ against all odds, because your spirit is with us. And if the spirit of God is with us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. So, Father, we just praise you and give you thanks with all our hearts, knowing that we're all sinners saved by grace, grace alone. Nothing that we can do of ourselves. And we come to you and just ask you to bless us, pour out your spirit in us and through us, that we may be shining lights to this world that has given up hope in many. Please be seated. With a bit of a change to the advertised programme, I can't move on from here without going into any sessions just before the children go out. Because I think when God has really ministered, and I don't know about you, I've fairly felt his spirit move. Now we've got to bring him thanks. Bring those needs because he knows our hearts are, are hurting. He knows we may be grieving. He knows our doubts and fears. And he wants us to come to him, trusting in him, faithful God, unchanging one, and bring those needs for ourselves and for others to him. So let's just have a moment of quiet, and then we're just going to pray. Our God is a life-creating, life-changing God. Don't you believe that? He knows the desires of our hearts. He knows our needs. And he wants us to take time to be with him and allow him to minister to us and through us. Father, as we take this time of contemplation, I don't know about others, but it really spoke to me, which is why we sang it twice. I just pray for your spirit to move out. And I just pray for all those that are hurting, those that would like to be here for, for whatever reason, they can't. I just pray that your spirit will minister to them right now, mind, body, and soul. You are God the healer, God the restorer, God the lovers of our soul, and I just pray that you will minister now. And that song says, not me, Lord, but through Christ it is in me. His Holy Spirit, when he ascended to heaven, he said, I'm going now, but I'm not going to leave you on your own. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher. And we just pray, Father that you will minister to us and through us in this place. So we will see transformations take place in ourselves, but also in others who we encounter. Like in the early church, when the Spirit came down at the day of Pentecost, and then people went out into the world with renewed vigor and enthusiasm, because it was no longer of their own strength and energy and passion. It was now through the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that that this will be a catalyst of change in this place, in this community where you have placed us. May not our will, but your will be done. And for anyone that's hurting now, because they're feeling incapacitated in some way, I just pray that you will pour out your spirit, Lord. We want miraculous healing. We want to see people transformed. We want to see hope restored, Father. We want to see people raised up. We want to see rejoicing in their hearts. Because at once they thought they didn't know where to turn. But you have met them, you have encountered them, you have shared with them. Now you want to guide, keep and lead them. And so I just pray for for anyone that's feeling lost at this time. Anyone that is doubting. Anyone is fearful for what tomorrow may bring. Anyone that's got tensions going on in their home. Whether it's children, whether it's relationship, whatever it is. I just pray, Father, you are... Through your son Jesus Christ, a great intercessor, the author of our salvation. And I just ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will just minister to it. Father, we want transformations. We don't want to just say words, Father. We want to see action. Because you are a dynamic God. You are a God that moves in your spirit. And your ways are far above ours. And yet you would come to us through your son. And he would give his life for us. To restore the relationship with you. Who are we, Father, that you would give so much and ask so little for us? So we come to you now with hearts open to receive of you. Speak to us, Lord. Uh, Allay our fears and doubts. Give us more hope and courage and conviction. So it's not of us, but your will being done in this world. And we will do our part in preparing the way for our Lord Jesus to return. And we pray against anything that hinders that in whatever way. Because sometimes we feel that the task we've been called to do is too much for us. 
But we realise we're never on our own and we never do this on our own. When we serve you and we serve sacrificially, that means not think, worrying about ourselves, but putting others in front of ourselves. You will bless that. Because that's the way Christ was. And that's the way we need to be. So I just pray, Father, that you will just move. I, just, I'm just, I want testimonies, Father, of what you have done. Breakthroughs in people's lives. We've all got problems. None of us are perfect. But, Father, you care for us. And you love us so much. So we just pray for our nation as we grieve. And for around the world, so many warm tributes for the Queen. You know, somehow you don't appreciate uh, how many people's lives she's impacted. And we pray as we contemplate, you know, is the constitutional monarchy the way forward in the next generation? I'm sure those conversations will take place soon. More nations want to be republics and independent. Is that going to happen? Father, you know we can speculate, but you know all things, and we just praise you. But we don't have to worry about it. We just need to trust in you, dedicate our lives to you, and you will reveal to us what you, you need us to know. So we just pray your blessing on each and every one of us. And anyone listening on YouTube, I just pray you will feel something of the God's presence. And may he minister to you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to sing just a children's song before they, they go out. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons as Father, Father Abraham. I want to get you to do something. Okay. Who's going to lead it? <laughs> Who said you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we think about that, don't we? About God's love. Well done, Wendell. Well volunteered. <laughs> you know how many people say now but don't know it? <laughs> so, so many people avoiding my gaze at them you would not believe it they're looking up to heavens looking down at the floor but they're avoiding it but let's, let's stand and sing anyway oh well done well done Kay said come and stand here for me you're going to leave us in the action Christian <laughs> well done I've got my volunteers are rolling okay let's line up here well done guys come, come this side yeah. I'm really sensing that enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. You told us to come. <laughs> cut, cut that bit out. <laughs> the key voluntarily. <laughs> and there's more. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Look, look, look at the screen here for the words coming up. And if you do the actions, if you do the actions for us, Let's all stand and let's really enjoy this as we, you know, before the children go to their classes. Let's just engage them in this time together. Okay? Ready? Thank you.
the joyful noise of the Lord, isn't he? Well done. Thanks to the guys. Okay, thanks, guys. You can sit down there. They're getting comfortable up here. Thank you for your help. It's good to praise God, and we want joy as well. There's a time for serious enough and fervent prayer, but there's also a time to be. God wants us to come. He said, like, at least we come like a child. You know, Jesus said we can't enter the kingdom of God. So sometimes there's a time for, for joy and to smile and just feel it's good to be um, amongst God's people. Now we're going to have the um, offering and notices, please. Good morning everyone. So this morning John is not only taking service but he's leading as well. And then next Sunday Anne will be hosting and Tony will be bringing the message for us. Um, because we're still getting back into the swing of things, there's still a few, there's a few things sort of less going on. Um, Mondays is back, as uh, it's been carried on through the summer, so that would have been a great blessing for those that weren't able to go to other things. Oasis is now back on Wednesdays and the small group is back on on Thursdays in the morning at Tony's and in the evening here at the church. Um, there's a members meeting coming up. It was due to be Monday the 19th, but it's now going to be Monday the 26th instead because of the Queen's funeral. So uh, we will obviously be observing some of us will be observing that. So that has been changed to Monday the 26th. Um, and then for your um, further notice, there's some there's a poster outside and some little bits on the table. Um, there's going to be a Macmillan coffee morning here on the 3rd of October, and that's from 11 until 2. So if you can uh, come along to that. Um, and uh, join in, that'd be great. I'm sure Chris would appreciate any donations cake-wise or money-wise if you can't be there. Um, if you do wish to make a physical donation of some cakes, let Chris know what you're making or, or what you're buying if you can't cook like I can't. Um, any, any donations are welcome. And the Cluster Prayer Diary this week is to remember the Jubilee uh, Community Church. Um, if we can take up our offering, but I understand that Sharon also wants to make a don thank giving thing, but she's disappeared out at the moment. Um, so we'll go ahead with the offering and then uh, maybe we can sort out a bit of a spot for her afterwards. <coughs> Sharon, would you like to come forward? <laughs> Should we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the offerings that we bring you today. Thank you that they're not the only offerings we can bring. We can offer to you every day of the week. They can be physical offerings, they can be spiritual ones, and they can be blessings from us directly to you or from us to other people um, so that we can pass on your blessings to them. And then in that way we can acknowledge your love for us and your love for them 
in the hope that they will understand how much you love everyone. And we just thank you that we are able to bring these gifts to you, be they because we, we want to, be they because we have a special occasion to celebrate, and therefore we are thanking you for what you do for us. And we're just so grateful for everything that you do for us and we are able then to do in reply for you. Amen. I want to continue this series of, of Jesus and and this time we have a discourse with the, uh, a disabled man and we, as I spoke before about uh, restoration and encountering God how he can transform our lives I want to sort of are we okay with the PowerPoint? I want us to consider you know being made whole in Christ First slide, please. Why did that come up on this? Okay. <laughs> Some of us live lives that never begin to reach their potential. Do you agree? Because sometimes we know we want to do things. We may have childhood dreams that when we grow up, we want to be this, we want to do that. But we don't know, it doesn't always materialise for whatever reason. Sometimes it's just, we're sort of restricted. We don't know how to find, to realise that dream or realise that desire. It's just a distant hope. And we're never sure how to make it a reality. You see, this is why people need, at an early age, to commit themselves to God. Because he can reveal to them um, where he wants them to be. He can guide us. He will steer us. He will allow us to be the people he created us to be. He knows our potential. He knows all that we'll become. But we need to, we need to allow him to, to direct our lives. And so many people don't allow this. And they end up uh, frustrated. They end up disillusioned with life in general because they have not found their purpose. They have not found fulfillment in anything that they have done. And so they become frustrated, they become angry, and they just feel that there's no hope, there's no point. This encounter that Jesus has in John 5, 1 to 15, encounters a disabled man and he wants him to do something. And it's very much about um, being obedient and being faithful and overcoming adversity. Is there anyone, it's a rhetorical question, I'm not expecting you to answer that's not faced at some time real challenges in your life. Times when you've often wondered, can I do this or will I get through it? I just want to pause for a moment and for you to think about that time in your life when you've wondered, you know, are you sure? I don't think I can do this. I don't think I will get through it. I'm always drawn to the Psalms when I think about David. And, you know, Psalm of David, I go to the highest heights and you are there. I go to the deepest depths and you are there. Where can I go and God's not there? And it's almost like when I'm happy and high and elated, it's great. But also at times when I'm down and despairing and don't know where to turn, at least I know my God is there with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. Here we look at this encounter. There's a question we want to ask. Do we really want to be whole? It's not, for some reason, not showing on that screen. It's the, do I really want to be whole? The question is, we know from when we read scripture, from the fall of humankind at that Garden of Eden where sin came into the world, we've never been whole people because Adam and Eve were the only whole people because their descendants, because sin had came in to Adam and Eve, were then forever flawed, corrupted, not living as they should be. And so we know that um, sinfulness came into the world at an early stage. And I think the challenge of us all, and now we can come through Christ, is to be, you know, 
to be restored, to be those people that are as God created us to be and had planned for us to be. In the close encounter with Jesus today, we ask that important question, do we really want to be well? Next slide, please. A lot of us today choose to live lives, perhaps, you know, managing our sickness, but not really getting through that. I want to read John 5, 1 to 6, just to start us off. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was the pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches, Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. For one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he'd been ill, he asked him, would you like to get well? The obvious question comes to mind. Why doesn't Jesus heal everybody by the pool? The site contained a large group of people, we're told, and they were suffering. There were people who had been blind for their whole lives, never seen their family members. They wanted to see. There were people whose bodies didn't work. They couldn't walk to the temple to worship, couldn't engage in the craft with their hands. John tells us there's all this suffering. But Jesus only heals one person. Why just this man? It's not because God doesn't know all about the suffering. It's not because of lack of compassion on Jesus' part. Maybe it's because this is the only man who really has enough faith to get healed. This is a very common teaching in our days. And it's something a question I often ask. You know, when we pray, when we desire of the Lord, how much do we put into it? Do we really believe he can do those things? Because as we become more materialistic as a nation or as a world, We've come to rely more on our own science, our endeavours and achievements in perhaps the academic field than through the Spirit of God. Don't you agree? Yeah. I've heard people say, oh, well, these people aren't really possessed. You know, it's mental illness. So people are retrospectively putting things on others. Others, those people weren't possessed by demons. That's not possible. They must have been a schizophrenic or something. In other words, modern science and, 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 and what they've got, various beliefs or studies are trying to sort of discount what was going on in the past and trying to somehow denigrate or deny um, what God can and was doing through the people and also the ailments that people have to overcome. So in many ways now we've become so scientific we're almost design, denying God's ability to heal, to restore. And often it is our faith. The Bible warns us about being lukewarm Christians how passionate are we? How much do we desire to see transformation take place? Because if it should take place, and it will take place, where do you think it will start? Out in the streets? Out amongst the unchurched? It should be within us. That's where it should start. Any transformation to take place within those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Those that know, have confessed their sinfulness, have turned to God, come to him through their son Jesus Christ. Now it starts their ministry. They're sent out into the world. That's great. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Now get yourselves in order and go out into that world in the name of Jesus. Healing and restoring. I'm not saying that everyone that's got an illness will be healed. Miraculous healing is great. But that's not our portion for everyone. But I don't know about you, I've heard testimonies and I've seen miracles take place. Often after times of fervent prayer and rallies where people gather with expectation, expecting God to do something. Because they have read scripture and they think, why not here? Why not now? Why not amongst us? Do we not desire of God in the same way? Do we not believe that God can do it? Do we not believe that God created the heaven and earth? Is there nothing that our God cannot do? But I think so many Christians nowadays have become a little bit lukewarm. Uh, they've got scientific now. What the scientists say, scientists say a lot of things. But they are flawed men and women like you and I. I do not trust in them, in it per se. 
They can have great ideas. I'm not saying there's not great inventions. And I'm not saying all, all they say and do is to be discounted. But I don't know about you. I put my trust, I put my faith in God the Almighty. The God that is, the God that was, and evermore shall be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to be clear about what we stand, what's the foundations of our faith, because that determines what's the foundations of our lives. It's true, it's connected. You can't have one without the others. What's the foundations of our faith? That's the question we need to ask. Why doesn't Jesus heal everyone at the pool? They couldn't walk. John tells us there's suffering, but Jesus heals just one person. Maybe it's because this man is the only one who had enough faith to get healed. There's a very, very common teaching this day. You can see it proclaimed by high, high profile, usually popular faith healers on TV. They almost say if you believe enough, you're claim bold enough, you can be healed. You can expect a miracle. Maybe this is a story to show that miracles only go to those whose faith is strong enough to claim them. Let's take a closer look. First, I'd like you to notice that we were told that Jesus approaches this man. This man is at the pool every day, probably made his living there as a beggar. And usually in stories of healing, the person who wants to be healed comes to Jesus, but not here. Jesus initiates the contact. Then you notice the question Jesus asks. Do you want to get well? That's a fair question. Because some people make quite a good living begging. It's relatively stress-free, just, you know, give me this, give me that. And you know what, I remember watching this, this program, one of these documentaries. It was in one of the Asian countries, and there was a man there had some sort of uh, disfiguration that made his hand look a bit, uh, his foot look a bit like a tree stump, you know, some sort of growth off it. And, he, and he'd made his life on begging, and there was an opportunity. Someone had, at, 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 uh, in America had, had seen it on, the, uh, on YouTube, and they'd offered to take him over there to examine it. And, and offered to do a cure free of charge. You know, he turned it down. Because it's almost a bit like, through his infirmity, he got attention, he got sympathy, and he got money. And if he was healed, he'd be ordinary, like an ordinary person of no great note, but he'd also have to be working. So to assume, well, that's silly. Of course, everybody wants to be healed. Do they? Because healing comes at a price. If you are healed, there's an expectation you will do more, perhaps, or do it more diligently. You can no longer use you know, an affirmity as an excuse. And you remember the week before last when I shared and talked about Fanny Crosby, how she had been blinded by, you know, virtually from birth, by an accident. Did it stop her ministry? It didn't stop her rating some of the greatest uh, hymns and praises to God in human history. It didn't hold her back, uh, her disability did not define her. And she was asked about it and she said, you know, you know, I'm happy. It's not been a problem for me. It may have been for others. Such grace, such humility. And you know, perhaps if she had been healed, it would have been different for her. But for, she was content. What God had given her was a gift and was a love and an ability to share and to encourage it's something we ought to continue sometimes when we, when we moan and groan and feel how unfair life has been. You know, if we've, got, if we've got a voice, we can still praise God. You know, we may not be able to move around as quickly, but we can still serve God. And our ministry doesn't stop when we retire. Our ministry is until we, we return to glory. Like the Queen, you know, her faithfulness. People can argue about the monarchy. But, and she would have had political opinions, but she never shared them in public. She may not have wanted to marry that person because with the monarchy and things, you, you know, you don't marry for love, you marry out of duty. You know? And historically, when we look at th things like that, they marriage to make alliances, so, you know, to, to stop wars and things like that. So it wasn't done for love, that sentiment. It was done out of duty. So when we consider sacrifices that, that Jesus made, it was out of love. He sacrificed for us and paid the price for us because he loved us. He could have had a long life. He could have been married with children and been quite ordinary, lived his life, not making any fuss, probably eat out a good living of a carpenter. But that wasn't his calling. That wasn't his portion. It wasn't his ministry. It wasn't his service. He came knowing his purpose, knowing his mission, knowing his ministry. And the Bible tells you he was obedient 
unto death. In other words, you know, when the Queen said, whether my life was long or short, you know, I will serve. Jesus' ministry was until his death. He never stopped loving. He never stopped serving. And he made the ultimate sacrifice. Here we have a scenario now where someone, you know, he's, he's broken in the physical sense. He's not whole. And Jesus comes to him to minister to him, to encounter him, to transform his life, to make him whole. When Jesus says to him, when, right, the answer seems a little obvious, doesn't it? When Jesus says to him, um, do you want to get well? The sick man said, I can't, sir. And this is John 5, 7. For I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am trying to get there, someone else always gets ahead of me. So the, the, the myth and the sort of rumor was that the, the, the angels were stirring up this wa the water. And the first one that got in got the blessings of healing. And the others that came later on didn't. This was the assumption. People sometimes have a tendency to want to make the healing some sort of mechanism or technique that they can sort of manipulate or control. At any rate, Jesus asked me, do you want to be whole? Do you want to get well? The man doesn't actually answer Jesus' question. He doesn't say yes. He gives reasons why. He hasn't been able to be the first one in the water when it stirred up. It's been going on for 38 years. In 38 years, he may have gotten a little community of friends together to get him down to the water. There's a story of a man more disabled than this, a paralyzed guy, when it, whose friends got him through a far more difficult challenge and broke through a roof to see Jesus. He might have saved up enough money from begging and paid someone to get him down to the water. It's true when you think about it, thinking, yeah, these would have been things to do. <laughs> How come he hasn't done that? You know, <laughs> the ingenuity of man when there's, you know, necessity is the mother of invention and all that sort of thing. Why didn't he do these things? There's a story of, you know, um, he may have laid himself in the water so he could be right next to it. So in other words, as soon as the water started to stir, he could have just kind of pushed himself into it. When Jesus says to him, do you want to get well, the man um, doesn't really say. There are a wide variety of amounts of faith people approach Jesus with. But here in John 5, Jesus doesn't even pursue the issue with this man. There are no questions. He didn't ask the man, do you believe? He didn't even ask him a second time if he wants to be well. And another thing, there's no indication that this man had greater faith than anyone else at the pool. Because sometimes people do that. We start to think someone else is such a great prayer, prayer, so eloquent, that they can pray and we shouldn't because they pray so well. They pray so nicely. They pray so, so movingly that somehow those prayers are good prayers. And anything we can offer is just not good enough. So why bother? Have you ever felt like that? I think I shared with you before. I always try and get mine in first. So when someone else comes afterwards, you know, <laughs> I never leave it to the last minute because they may have prayed at everything and they're struggling to think of something. But we can often do that. We can look at, at our, our fellow uh, man or woman and think, well, they seem to be so much more. They seem to have so much more. They seem to be capable of so much more. It can be off-putting. You know, but we're not in competition with each other. We are called to be in cooperation with each other. At times when we may be ill, we need the support of others. That's what we do as a fellowship. That's the calling on us. Sometimes we get healed, you know, our body heals itself. And sometimes it doesn't. We're still called to encourage and to support one another. There's no indication that this man had any faith at all. Je Jesus doesn't view acts of healing pri primarily as relief from suffering to be given out to those who have high enough levels of, of certainty. He performs this act of healing to reveal his identity, to authenticate his mission as the son of God. That is what he is doing. You see, sometimes Jesus will say, heal someone and say, don't go and tell everyone. I don't want to make a big fuss to be made at this time. And others he will approach and minister to someone. But see, Jesus, being God, knows the hearts of all men and women and he knows the desires of this man's heart. 38 years of trouble, 38 years of struggle. And now Jesus has gone to him. He hasn't had to make his way to Jesus. And, and Jesus is going to grant his wish and make him whole. 
Sometimes we may have to go through periods in our life where we can seem far from God. He can seem far from us. Often it's because of our own hearts. We've turned from him. We focus on our children. We've got so mired into our situation that we feel so far from God. But he is never far from us. He is with us every day and all the time. He is a faithful and loving God. And he wants to restore. He wants to heal. He wants to make us whole. Sometimes it's physical healing. Sometimes it can be spiritual healing. Sometimes it can be emotional healing. But it's his will that needs to be done, not ours. That's what we need to remember. In John 5.10, it says the Jewish leaders objected. They said that this man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry that sleeping man. You see, it doesn't matter what happens, what miracles take place. There's always someone that's got a problem. And that's what goes on about control. If certain people heal in a certain place, then somehow it's okay. But if others heal, it's not. And that's to do with control. You know, I, I remember at my previous church, someone prayed and the person was healed. And the person was thanked. I thought, don't thank the person. It's not them that's healed. It's the power of God that's healed. God must get the glory. Because if not, it starts to become a person. Thing. I healed that person. It's a God that must get the glory. God will use us as conduits of agents of his perfect and holy will. In the same way he speaks through us, brothers and sisters in Christ, God will use us as his mouthpiece to speak to this nation. Because if he wants a voice, why not use us? Are we willing to serve him in that way? Are we willing to speak God's word through us? Because that's the calling as Christians, as believers, that's what he's calling us to do. He wants us to go and proclaim in his name and to the glory of his son. And restoration will take place. Not everybody gets healed. But you know, we are told to keep believing, keep trusting, and never give up. Trust in him as a faithful God. And he will minister to us and through us. And I think that's such a blessing, such a privilege, such a challenge at times. But God will do that. Well, well done. <laughs> Kevin, you just change when you're ready. <laughs> I'll just keep going with the notes. I can't see it on the screen here. But, but the main thing we need to do is remember that God cares for us and he loves us. And sometimes people are made whole in, in many ways, but in others not. And often we can stop healing. Do you know that? We can actually hinder God's healing and restoration in our lives. Because of our attitudes, we can resist we can quench the Spirit of God. We are warned in Scripture, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve it. Do not quench it. Because the Spirit is the teacher, the enabler, the comforter, the restorer. And we can quench it. We can ignore it. We can resist it. We are told to be open to it. Because that's what equips us and enables us to do the ministry that God has called us to. Are we free? Do we allow the Spirit of God freedom to use us and to work through us? Yes? It's a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about that as well. <coughs> you may want to pray about times you resisted it. And there's been times when I thought, you know, I felt God spoken to me. But it hasn't been at a convenient time. I've been doing over... You know, we want to do that. We want it in our time, in our way, and at our convenience. But that's not sacrifice. That's quite selfish. But that's our first human instinct. We tend to be like that. What I want, what I need. Me, me, me. Because that's where we are. That's part of our fallenness. We are separate. Our natural state of existence is not in harmony with God. It's not in, in a wholesome relationship with our creator. It's in brokenness. It's in disarray. It's in frustration. It's in, ang it's in anger. I'm angry with the world. I'm angry with my situation. These are the natural states of existence. Very few people find contentment. Very few people live joyous lives because they don't know well, and they've not exercised God's will in their lives. It's only through healing and restoration, encountering Jesus, accepting him as your Lord and Saviour and allowing him to do what he wants to do within us can we truly be transformed. And as we are transformed, 
we can then help transform others. Don't you agree? <coughs> Acknowledge our part in the ministry of God's calling. Claim the promises and ask for his help. That's so true. We need to claim the promises. He promised he will never leave us or forsake us. So we are never alone. And even though the task may seem, seem too great, we trust in God. How much do we trust him? That he will do something. That he will act. That he is present. Because he is everywhere. Omniscient. Omnipresent God. We can trust him. There's no way we can go where he is not there. And anything we do in the name through his son Jesus Christ, he said, you know, he will honour that. He will honour it. Thank you. Let's take a moment of quiet reflection. And I want to pray um, for, I know we've had the intercessions, I just want to pray for healing and restoration within us. I know there's someone grieving, I've got news, was it yesterday or Friday that... Uh, the father had passed away. We want to pray for the family. And of course, as I said earlier, we want to pray for the nation. Father, as we have heard, albeit briefly, about this, how you healed, you encountered and healed this man that had been sick for 38 years. It's hard for us to imagine what it's like to be incapacitated to a, to, to a greater degree in that way for so long. And yet Jesus sought him out. He could have sought out others, but he went for that person to transform him, to relieve him of his illness, Father, to give him new life, new hope. And that's what Christ has done for us. He has called us. He has encountered us. And he has enabled us through him to come to you. I just pray for anyone who's struggling at this time with any infirmity, be it something recent or something distant, that you will heal them, Father. And if not total healing, you will enable them to, to, to you know, endure. Because sometimes that's what we have to do, endure. But Father, you know the hearts of us all and you know the desires. And I just pray your blessing on, in and through each and every one of us. I pray for our family members. That you will bless them. You know the needs for them all. I pray for those with a faith and those that don't have a faith. They've not accepted you yet as their Lord and Saviour. So I just come in Jesus Christ's name and just ask for you to do your work of healing and transformation. We, we touched upon the issue of suffering the week before last. And Father, we know that you don't want us to suffer. That wasn't your will for us. But when sin came into the world... There was a separation from you. We lost contact. We lost our way. And we didn't know your way for us. But you didn't leave us in that state of chaos. You, brought, you sent your only son into the world for us. To restore the relationship we once had. And we just pray that you will enable us to be able to, to, to keep going forward. To keep pressing on. We can't change the past. But the present makes the future. I just pray that you will touch our hearts and enable us to be those people. Uh, you know, real light shine out into this broken world. So many people are hungry uh, for transformation. So many people aren't happy with their existence. And they often look and wonder, there must be more to life than this. But they don't know you, Father. You are there. You're reaching out to them. But they don't know how to come to you. Sometimes it can be pride. A stubbornness. If there was a God, why isn't in this? But often you've given us free will, Father. We're free to accept you or to deny you. You won't force yourself on anyone. But in the same way that Jesus encountered them, I he went to them because he knew the desires of that man's heart and he ministered to him. And the authorities around him, they didn't like it what he'd done because he wasn't one of them. Who was he that to come? And heal and restore. So Father I just pray. That you'll minister to us all now. Both near and far. And may they feel your presence. I just pray that anyone that's listening. Uh, via YouTube will feel something. Of your presence today. We pray this in Jesus precious. And loving name. Amen. Amen.
We're not going to sing, he, he will hold me fast. Let's stand and sing as our closing uh, today. I need thee every hour. Just thinking about that constant need to be in a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Baptist Church, covering for Pastor Reuben. I think he flies to he flew to America to see his daughter. She's recovering from an operation so do hold them in the prayers and his daughter over in America. So I'll be over at um, Britwell Baptist. My thanks to Tony for uh, covering for me here. But don't worry Pastor Reuben's going to be covering for me when I'm at the Holy Land or <laughs> in January so it's quid pro quo. So we give thanks for that. And let's just share together from Numbers have we got it to go on? Oh. It's not coming up. Let, let's say together from, from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you. Thanks to Alvina for playing and for Adam. And my thanks to everyone for coming and sharing. I just pray that you felt the spirit of the living God at this time. And please don't rush away unless you really need to. Do stay for refreshments and have a time of fellowship. And if anyone feels moved by anything that's been shared or just want to come up for prayer, then do meet me over by the communion table and we can pray for one another. It's important we spend this time together ministering to and for um, one another as well. Thank you, everyone. Take care, and God bless.